side for Vieira, who will play through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal, Gabriel Jesus to finish it off, oh what a way to do it, Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal, he's back and he's back with a bang, into the penalty area it goes, Gabriel Keller and it's into the back of the net, Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna. The Daily Arsenal Podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna. Just a brief episode today, but on a subject that I think we need to discuss. We need to talk about Manchester City versus the Premier League. What on earth is going on here? This is absolutely bonkers. And this situation has an impact not just on Arsenal, but the rest of the Premier League too. Obviously, we're going to look at it through an Arsenal-centric lens because that's what we do here on the Chronicles of Aguna. But I think this is a major, major story that needs discussing, that needs addressing, that we've got to um, try and make sense of somehow. Um, The hearing of the case, basically, between Manchester City and the Premier League takes place in, like, what, five days' time? Has this been in the pipeline for a while or is this something that Manchester City have sprung on the Premier League? I don't know. We're going to try and make sense of it. We're going to try and figure it all out on this episode of the Chronicles of a Guna podcast. So if we go back to yesterday where we read sort of early afternoon-ish that Manchester City's hearing around the 115 charges that the Premier League have brought against them, was going to take place in November. And later on in the day, we heard from Matt Lawton um, of the Times that Manchester City have launched unprecedented legal action against the league itself. Now, it's understood that the basis of this legal action, what Manchester City are essentially saying in layman's terms, is that they don't think some of the financial restrictions that have been imposed on the football clubs that take part in the Premier League, on the shareholders in the Premier League, the stakeholders, if you like, are fair. Now, we know that these rules changed around about the time that the Newcastle takeover took place. And we know that Manchester City are up against it when it comes to a lot of these topics because of the nature of the 115 charges, which have all been made public. You can go off and you can have a read. What Manchester City are also saying, according to these reports, is that they feel that there's a discrimination against clubs um, that are owned by golf. Do they call themselves a state-owned club? I don't know, nation-owned club, whatever. But clubs that have ownership groups from that area, from the golf, they think they're being discriminated against. Look, I think this is huge in a number of ways. First of all, I I think it's a really bad look for Manchester City to be trying to sue the Premier League at this stage, given where we're at on their case. Because what it does is it says, we're not going to focus our efforts on clearing our name ahead of this hearing that's coming up in November. Instead, we're going to maybe try and distract from the initial case, the initial issue, the thing that everybody was focused on. We're going to distract from that and we're going to try and take you down another path. Now, I I don't know because I'm not a legal expert and I wouldn't want to speculate, but my personal opinion on this is simple. I think that Manchester City have realized that they're not going to get away with uh, some of the charges that have been brought against them. And they believe that if they can prove some of the changes that the Premier League made and some of the restrictions that they implemented as being unlawful, Well, by default, they'll be able to get a lot of the case against them thrown out. You can't charge someone, follow it through and sanction them over something that was deemed to be unlawful. So that's where I think Manchester City are going with this. But a lot of people have looked at this situation and said guilty, 115 charges. There's no way they wriggle their way out of this. And I've always been of the opinion that I can have my own gut feel, I can have my own view on this, 
but I very much do believe in innocent until proven guilty. However, there are things that you can do along the way that can sway the perception of you in this instance. And I think Manchester City doing this, judging by what I've read on social media, some of the opinions I've listened to, some of the conversations I've listened to about this, I think by making this move, a lot of people are now more convinced of their guilt than they maybe were a few days ago. Now, there'll be people whose opinions haven't changed. There'll be people who believe that Manchester City are innocent. But what I find really interesting is that there hasn't really been this public outcry from their own supporters about this. And I think there's a few Man City supporters out there, from having spoken to a couple of people today, that are perhaps a little bit embarrassed by this, that feel that this is shining their club in a bad light. And maybe that's not the way to go if you're trying to persuade everybody else that you're innocent, despite having 115 charges brought to you. Again, I'll make it perfectly clear. I don't know if they're guilty. I don't know if they're innocent. But the fact that they are now suing the Premier League, I think is a bad look. And I think this is a really, really important case for the Premier League. This is a historic case because if the Premier League were to lose this case, if it was to be found, to be ruled, to be judged, that some of the Premier League's rules and regulations around spending and, um, you know, sponsorships through linked companies and all the rest of that, if that was to be found as unlawful, it makes a complete mockery of the Premier League. The problem is, and, and the Premier League have this issue, right? They they wanted all this investment. They wanted money to come into the Premier League to turn it into the greatest league in the world to the point where they completely put morals and where that money was coming from and regulation to one side. They made it so relaxed that anybody from anywhere could come in and invest in a football club. And we saw a boom, okay? We saw a league that was dominated by Manchester United and Arsenal turn into a league that was then, um, you know, super competitive. Chelsea uh, became a real threat due to foreign investment coming in. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with foreign investment, by the way. Let me be clear on that. But they let money come in without really doing their due diligence. They had to let the Newcastle takeover go through, in my opinion, because despite what they believe to be links to a nation, you know, they, they, the horse had already bolted. They'd allowed this to happen so many times with others that they would have looked really silly and really stupid if they were to have rejected and blocked the Newcastle United takeover. But they've become a financial force. Manchester City are a massive financial force. And what we've seen over the years is more and more investment from outside, propping up the standard and the level of the league because with financial power, you can bring in better players, better managers, et cetera, et cetera. But we've lost control of it to the point where now I think people are starting to question the integrity of the Premier League. And in order to get their house in order, because of the fact that there is or was an independent regulator breathing down their necks, they have tried to rein it all in. And Manchester City don't want it to be reined all in. You know, they think that everybody's ganging up on them because we've heard today that half of the more than half of the Premier League clubs are backing the league on this and in this particular case. And again, that is a an unconfirmed report as, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm just going by what we're reading today. But it just looks to me like this is a case that the Premier League simply cannot afford to lose. But if they don't, you know, they, they cannot afford to lose it. If Man City lose it, then it makes them look even more guilty. Look guilty being the, the operative word there. So the problem is, is that all of the focus has gone away now from the 115 charges. And we were hoping there was going to be some conclusion to that sooner rather than later. Not because I'm one of those people that says guilty, 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 guilty. Because the truth is, as I keep on saying to you guys, I just don't know. But because this is a cloud hanging over the league. I talked about the impact a case like this can have on the integrity of the competition. The 115 charges has done so much damage already because everybody's looking at Manchester City suspiciously, rightly or wrongly. They're looking at them suspiciously. They're wondering how they've been allowed to get away with this if indeed they have breached the rules for so many years without anything being done about it. And now Manchester City, I think, are, are possibly distracting from what the main issue is and are trying to save their own skin 
by seeking to prove that some of these changes were unlawful, in which case, if they are proven to be unlawful, how serious and strong can you go on the punishment of the 115 charges, given a lot of them relate to what we're contesting and what we're talking about in this new case that's been brought to light. This thing with sponsorships and inflation of revenues through uh, doing deals with companies that are linked, I don't like it. I don't like it. Never have, never will. And I'd say the same if it was my club. And I think something needs to be done about that. That's what the Premier League have seek to do. Now, I'm not saying the Premier League are perfect, but I'm getting incredibly frustrated by reading sort of some of the stuff I've seen online today where people are sort of pretending that Manchester City are these freedom fighters that are seeking to take down the Premier League cartel. That's the way it's been framed by a lot of people today. Obviously, mostly of a Man City persuasion. But that's that's not what we're talking about here. This idea that a club that were, let's be honest, in terms of history, comparatively speaking to some of the other big boys in this division, were nowhere near it, have had this huge injection, have been able to ignore the rules, if indeed they are guilty, for a nine-year period, building themselves up to a point where they are the strongest team and by quite some distance, monopolizing this league and doing it through incredible wealth, through deals that are allegedly not quite as legit as they'd have you believe. That's that's huge. But you can't play the we're trying to take down the Premier League cartel card. If Crystal Palace was saying that, or if, I don't know, Brentford was saying that or whatever, I think there would be some validity to that point. And you'd understand why the little guys are feeling picked on. But Manchester City are not a little guy in the Premier League anymore. They've won five of the last six Premier League titles. They're not a little guy anymore. They're one of the big dogs now. They're one of the big boys. And I'd expect the same scrutiny and the same, you know, real sort of, what's the word? I'd expect to see the same level of diligence and the same level of scrutiny around any of the clubs in this division, whoever it is, whether it's my club, whether it's Man United, whether it's Liverpool, whatever. You can't bend the rules. And then when you get caught bending the rules, if and again, I'll stress the point, if they're found guilty, then sue the Premier League and say that the rules that the majority of the league, because you need more than 14 clubs in this division to vote anything in, you can't then say that the rules are unlawful because you don't like them. And that's what it feels like we're seeing unfold here. It feels like we're seeing Manchester City, who are up against it because of these 115 charges, again, whether they're guilty or not, have decided now that they're going to contest the rules that the majority of the league have voted in because they don't suit them and they don't like them. And it could have an impact on the level of punishment dished out for their breaches of the rules. Do you see what I mean? It, it, It just, none of it fits. It's a really bad move on Man City's part, I think, from a PR perspective. And I think the public opinion of them has gotten even worse overnight. I really do believe that. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section as well on this. I think what they called it, and uh, forgive me uh, if I've got this wrong. In fact, let me just go over to my tweet because I did tweet this. Um, they called it the tyranny of the majority. Now, I think that's based on a book that was written about something far more serious than football. The tyranny of the majority, in this instance at least, in this case that we're talking about right now, feels like a dramatic way of saying the democracy has won and we don't like it. And to be clear, because I have to be clear, are they guilty? I don't know. Are the changes that the Premier League made unlawful? I don't know, because I don't know the law inside out. All I know is that it benefits everybody involved, including Manchester City. In fact, Manchester City, more than anybody, for this 115 case, the charges that have been brought against them, to be dealt with. If they're guilty, take the punishment on the chin, move on, go again. If they're not guilty, then trust in the justice system that it's done its job and it shouldn't be spoken again 
spoken of again going forward. They'd have nothing to answer moving forward and going forward if they're found not guilty. They should be working towards that. So that's why I feel like they've hit a point where they don't believe that they can be found not guilty. And so now they've turned their attentions to the changes that the Premier League made and want to find them unlawful. What's the benefit of doing that? Well, the benefit of doing that is that if those changes that have been made have been found to be unlawful, they've got a strong case when they're arguing against the 115 charges that the rules that they are seen to have broken or, or accused of having broken were unlawful too which means that the punishment that they face could be reduced, less severe. The question is, how does this affect Arsenal? And this, look, this answer is probably um, fair to pretty much every club in, in the Premier League. You can't have clubs gaining unfair advantages through bending financial rules. Because there are a lot of clubs in this division that have adhered to these rules. There are a lot of clubs in this division that have gone without at times when it comes to players that they wanted to sign or had to do, build projects a lot slower than maybe they would have liked in an ideal world because they've been trying to comply and ensuring that they comply with the rules and regulations that are in place from fear of sanctions and punishments that could set them back further and do them not just on the pitch, but reputationally huge damage. It's not one rule for one and one rule for everybody else. The rules have to be followed by everybody. And Manchester City can tell you that everybody's ganging up against us. Well, no, they're not. They just want the rules that they've all adhered to and stuck to, to be, you know, to be, uh, what's the word? To be implemented, to be adhered to. And if you're not, adhering to those rules and laws, then you need to face the consequences of that. Just like Everton, who broke the PSR rules, faced the points deduction. I think a lot of people felt that the, the punishment was a little bit harsh in the first instance, and they appealed and they got some of the points back. And I think that was always the debate. How severe should the punishment be? Not did they break the rules or not. They broke the rules and they deserved some form of punishment. The debate came around what that punishment should be. And I'm sure if Manchester City are found guilty, then there will be a debate around what the punishment should be for them and how severe that should be. And if, for example, they're relegated down to League Two, people will say that's not fair. And that's another debate to have on another day. But right now, I don't think Manchester City have done themselves any favours in doing this. And I think the the legacy clubs, if you like, your Arsenals, your Man Uniteds, your Liverpools, who Manchester City seem to think are out to get them, are going to come out of this looking, you know, really squeaky clean, whilst Manchester City are going to look really, really bad. I just don't understand why they've done this, and I don't understand what they seek to gain from it. Yes, City are powerful. Yeah, they've got money. They can tie anybody and everybody up in paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a case that the Premier League, for its integrity, for its future, cannot lose. And so I don't believe they will lose because they will have the backing of most of the clubs in the division, as well as their own might and power that they've built up over the years. I just think they have to win it. They have to win it for the future of English football for the future of its integrity, for the future of the competition. And I was very open-minded about the Manchester City case. And I always said, don't know if they're guilty. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say 115 charges, 115 charges after every match they win, like some people do. I'm not going to say it after every trophy that they lift, like a lot of people do, because let it play out. Let's see what happens. But this was a seismic move from Manchester City, in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, to distract and protect them against what they fear is coming down the line in November. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. And if you're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna on audio, then please do leave us a review. I'd really, really appreciate that. I will see you all tomorrow on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and have a great day slash evening, depending on when you're taking this in. Goodbye.